I am Jairel Friam Pereira, playing the role of the old priest. Hi, I'm Brazil Christian B. Makarig and I'll be playing the countryman. I'm Richard Rodriguez. I am playing the people from the crowd one and editor. I am Anyalka Catriz de Guzman, playing the role of person in the crowd two and narrator. Hi, my name is Jana Bell and McGillion and I'll be playing the people from the crowd three and one of the narrators. Long, long ago, on market day, a countryman came into the town and eventually brought with him a load of very special pears to sell. In a good corner, he set up his barrow and soon had a great crowd around him, for everybody knew he was still selling extra fine pears, but he was often asking for an extra high price. Then, as he was crying up his fruit, a sad, aged, ragged, hungry-looking priest stopped right in front of the barrow and begged him very respectfully to offer him one of his pears. But, the countryman, who was very meek and very bad-tempered, wouldn't approve of giving him any. And as the priest appeared unable to move on, he started to call him all the horrible names he could think of. Fresh pears! Fresh pears! Fresh pears for sale! Get your fresh pears! Excuse me, sir. May I have one of your pears? No! You need to buy one! You're so dirty, old, smelly, and disgusting to look at! Pardon me, sir. You have many pears in your wagon. I only ask for one pair. You would never realize, even if you lost one. There's no need to get angry. Give him a pair that is going bad. It satisfies his hunger. The fella is right. You'd never notice it. No! You need to buy one! You're so dirty, old, smelly, and disgusting to look at! What kind of person are you? You're so rude! You still call yourself a human being? All the people around him started to argue. Give him a pair! From a person, and then another, before the constable of the market rushed up, hearing the talks. And when he had found out what the matter was, he took some money from his purse, bought a pair, and gave it to the priest, since he was afraid that the noise would come to the ears of the mandarin who was being taken down the lane. You all know that I have no place to live in. No parents, no children of my own. I have no spare clothes, no food, for the reason of being a priest. It troubles me seeing that a person can be so greedy and cruel that giving a single pair angers them. I am a different man compared to this countryman. I have some absolutely exquisite pears here, and if you accept them from me, I would feel most grateful. But why didn't you just eat them rather than begging? Oh, first and foremost, I need to plant it. So, he ate up the pear, only leaving a single pip. Then, he took a pick which was fastened across his back, dug a deep hole in the ground at his feet, and planted the pip, which he covered all over with earth. Someone fetch me some hot water. I need to water this. The people from the crowd thought he was joking, 
But one of them ran and fetched a kettle of boiling water and gave it to the priest. Here you go. Then the priest poured it all over the sowed seed. While pouring the water, the people saw the seed growing and growing. It's growing! It's getting taller and taller! Look, the pears are growing! The pears are weighing the branches down to the ground. The priest's face shone with pleasure and the crowd roared with delight. When he picked the pears one by one until they were all gone, he was handing them around with a bow to each man present. All this time, the countryman, quite forgetting his barrow and pears, had been in the midst of the crowd, standing on the tips of his toes and straining his eyes to try to make out what was happening. When the old priest had gone and the crowd was getting thin, he turned around to his wagon and saw with horror that it is quite empty. Every single pear had gone. Oh no! What happened to my pears? In a moment, he understood what had happened. The pears the old priest had been so generous in giving away were not his own. They were the countryman's. What was more, one of the handles of his wagon was missing, and there was no doubt that he had started from home with two. He was in a towering rage and rushed as hard as he could after the priest. But just as he turned the corner, he saw, lying close to the wall, the barrel handle itself, which, without any doubt, was the very pear tree that the priest had cut down. All the people in the market were simply spitting their sides with laughter. But as for the priest, no one saw him anymore. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>